Let's start now the final section of chapter six, 6.5, about the average value of a function. Uh, this is gonna be our final application of integration in this chapter. We'll actually return to uh, applications of integration again in chapter eight. Uh, but before we do that, we're gonna develop some more techniques of integration. Because as we'll notice in many of these examples we've done, although setting up the integral was a huge challenge, the actual computation of the integral was a fairly, it was fairly simple, right? And that's not a principle that's gonna be true for forever. Uh, but that's a discussion for another day. Uh, what I wanna talk about this idea is average values. To so give you some understanding of what that is. Um, suppose we have some data set, and it, it's a very simple data set. So we have numbers V1, V2, V3, up to some final value Vn. Like these could be like homework averages you have in like a hypothetical calculus two class, right? Um, if you want to find your average uh, homework score, well, the idea is you just take V1 plus V2 uh, plus V3 all the way up to Vn. So you add together all the values and then you divide by the total number of data points you have there, how many homework assignments were there. In a slightly more compact form, this looks like one over N times the sum as I goes from one to N of the VIs. Uh, and so this, this is how one would find the average uh, homework score or the mean homework score right there. Um, it's a very, fairly simple idea. So could, but th this works only if you have a finite sum. Could we turn this into an infinite sum of some kind, uh, such as an integral? And the, ad the, the idea is giving the following. Uh, let's take our x-axis right here, uh, and we'll have some function uh, that sits above it. Maybe it looks something like this. And we have two specific values in mind. We have this x equals a and x equals b. And so looking at the region below the function here, we're interested in what would the average value, the average value of f on the interval a to b. What would that look like? Well, trying to mimic the, the average formula we talked about here for this uh, finite list of data points, uh, let's try the technique of accumulation. If we subdivide the domain into smaller pieces, so we have some x1, x2, xi minus 1, xi, you get the basic idea here. Look at just a single interval right here. Uh, let us consider this as a, let, let's the, the subdivision of the interval right here, let's, let's consider this as like a, a few isolated finite points right here. So, if we choose xi star, we have this f of xi star right here, and we choose just representatives for each interval. Then we have this, we have a bunch of values right here. We have this f of x1 star plus f of x2 star, and we proceed all the way up to this f of x n star. We have all these data points, right? And so just assume that instead of a continuous function, we just have this isolated sequence of points, right? And if we take the average of those things, well, we would take that sum and divide it by n. That would give us the average. And like we saw above, uh, this would look like one over n times the sum of f of xi star as i ranges from one to n. And so this would give us the value. We could then take uh, then our average value, uh, which is often denoted f sub a v e. Uh, the average value then we can take the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n times the sum as i goes from one to n of f of x i star. And so that would give us the average value of the function, taking the limit of these approximate solutions, right? Because as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you take more data points and better accurately, it more accurately uh, calculates the average value, thus taking the limit gives the true value. But unlike other applications of the integr uh, of integrals that we've seen in the past, in the present form, this limit, it is an infinite sum, but it's not a Riemann sum. Um, and therefore, this doesn't immediately translate into a uh, 
it doesn't immediately translate into an integral because a Riemann sum, we need a delta x, which we don't have here. Now it turns out it's not too hard to fix that because all we have to do is multiply this thing by b minus a over b minus a. That is multiply by the length of the, of the interval over itself. The reason we do that is because if you take the b minus a on top and couple it with the one minus n that's already present, those two powers combine to make a captain delta x right here. Uh, and so if you, if you kind of put that around, you get your delta x, and then you're gonna keep this b minus a sticking around. And so with this adjustment, uh, we can rewrite this as one over b minus a. I took the b minus a over here out because it's constant with respect to n. Then we get the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum where i ranges from one to n, uh, f of x i star times delta x. Now the limit of this sum, which is now a Riemann sum, will be the integral. We get one over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And so we get a very nice simple formula for this idea of average value. The average value of a function will be the area under the curve divided by the length of the interval. Uh, so we get one over b minus a times the integral of f of x here. And this is summarized in this average value formula that we see right here. The average value um, is gonna be the length of the interval uh, that is the, the area under the function divided by the length of the interval. Uh, let's see an example of this. It doesn't get much more complicated than what you've seen already here. Uh, so consider, consider the function f of x equals one plus x squared. Um, let's find the average value of f on the interval negative one to two. Um, in terms of a formula, the average value f of the average value of f, this is going to look this will look like 1 over 2 minus a negative 1 times the integral from negative 1 to 2 of f of x, which is 1 plus x squared dx. That's all there is to it. Um, simplifying the interval there, 2 minus a negative 1 is, a, is 3, so the length of the interval is 3. Um, finding an antiderivative for 1 plus x squared, we get x plus x cubed over 3. Plug it in negative 1 and 2. Uh, when you plug in 2, you're going to get 2 plus 8 thirds. Uh, then we plug in negative 1, you're going to get a negative 1 minus a third. And so, of course, negative 1 mi a minus a negative 1 is actually a plus 1 there. So you get 2 plus 1, which is a 3. And then we're going to get, um, like, likewise, when you distribute the negative sign onto the negative 1 third, you're going to get a positive 1 third plus 8 thirds is 9 thirds, which of course is the same thing as just a 3. And so you get 3 plus 3, which is 6, 6 over 3, and we see that the average value is going to be a 2. Uh, and so in terms of computing average value, that's what we get. And so in essence, what we've now computed is that the middle y-coordinate for this function would be the y-coordinate y equals 2. This is the middle of the function.